share. Share, 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 share. There we are. All right, good deal. All right, we're ready. We're rolling. Come on on there. All right, good morning, good morning, good morning. Y'all catching us. Catching us on the live. Catching us on the live. Let me get a drink of water and we'll get going here. We started a little bit late because things happen different today. All right, let's start off with a word of prayer. Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, thank you for this day. I'm asking now, we just got done praying a nice long prayer, as Jaden does, uh, you know, he, he loves those long prayers. But uh, right now, I need, I need help to stand behind the cross, that they don't see me, but they see Jesus. So Holy Spirit, have your way now in this word, that uh, say what needs to be said, stand on the words of Isaiah, that this word will go forth, and it will accomplish the things we're into to send. In the precious holy name of Jesus, we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. So good morning to everyone who's catching us on the live um, and then on the recording to in, in you that are watching from the east. I love you guys. You okay? You guys, I, I love you guys. You're, you're the best. But it's be good afternoon to you. So it's probably what, 6, 7 o'clock here? I mean, it's 1130. It's 1135 here. 1137. So it's probably what, 730, 635 where you're at. But I'm glad you could join us this morning. Um, this morning, as I was seeking God <clears throat> about what he wanted to say this morning, and he just said for at the beginning of the week, it really messed me up, it really did. Um, he, said, uh, he said, go to 2 Kings chapter 2, and um, I was just like, okay. So I went and read 2 Kings chapter 2 and then listened to it, you know, because sometimes, you know, when you're, um, when you're reading it, it's a little bit different when you listen to it and read it. It's something that kicks, you know, for me it is, it could be different for you. You, got, you know, so many of you are very, very intelligent people with about the Bible. I met a young man the other day, well I didn't meet him, but I got into a, a conversation with him the other day. Dude was so smart about scripture, man. He was quoting scripture like this, and I'm like, man, I wish my brain worked like that. I don't know why God called me to preach. I was like, oh yeah, because I don't have all that. I can't boast on it, so it's not on me, it's on him. So when it happens, it's him, not me. So, so it's kind of cool. Um, but in that, I was looking at, uh, all right, God, so I'm looking at what's happening in this, in this story, you know, and so I, I'm like, okay, so what is the, I, I don't know about you, but some of the things that, I, I, here's where I go. When I grew up, I, in fact, it's kind of cool. M my friend, when I grew up in high school, um, was, uh, he was the pastor's son. So in that, we had a conversation the other day, and, um, and, and, and there are some things. He's got a great memory. And he's like, remember when we did this, and we were in, you know, in youth group, and we did that? I'm like, heck no, I don't remember a daggone thing about I said, I remember doing this, and what it was, I, me causing trouble, and then me and him causing trouble. And it, I mean, I, I, it, I didn't remember the good things about some of the stuff, but when, but when he started telling me some of the stuff, it jogged my memory, and I started remembering it, you know? Um, like one of the things that, you know, that we did was we, we went to this youth group thingy one time at another church, and they were doing this special about um, records. Remember, maybe you remember back there, back in the, uh, in the 80s, that was really big that the, the vinyl records you know if you took the vinyl record and you put it on and you turn it and you take it go backwards and play it over the speaker and you play it backwards there was a, a, a subliminal message they would be saying oh, you know and so it was a big thing you know and one of the things that he told his dad who was the preacher he says you know what he goes I used to never have nothing to do with rock and roll music until we went to that thing he goes, and when we went to that thing, it caught my curiosity, so I started listening to rock and roll because of that. You know, it's like, so some of the things that, they, that we've done in life has caused a directional change, and, and in that it's messed, some of us, it's messed our lives up for a little time, you know, but God has a way of always redeeming the things because he just, that's, that's who God is, you know. So he ends up coming in, but the idea is that what if you did things right? You know, what, what if you did things right and that God would bless the whole time of your life? You know, from the very point of what your purpose is, that you recognize that, and then God would say, you know, I'm with you this whole time. What if 
you said, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do it God's way and have the testimony of saying, I did it God's way and this is what happened. And it was all good and people got saved, people got healed, uh, you know, your, the blessings of God. You saw the ups and downs financially, God blessed, but when, when finances were down, God still showed up and provided for you. You know, uh, um, I, I think of my sister, you know, that she, if anybody did it right, you know, her and her husband did it right. You know, I remember when I thought she wasn't going to do it right because she was dating my friend and he was a heathen. I mean, he was a bad heathen. But, you know, she decided to seek God on him and said, time to dump him, you know. So uh, uh, I just sit back and I'm looking at the country and I'm looking at everything and I'm like, OK, God. As I look back when I was a teenager, when I sat in church, one of the things that I, I um, um I, I, I listened to the preachers and the teachers, and a lot of them was the stories of the Bible, and they would break down the big words and what they really mean, and it would bore me to death. And I just like, you know, eh, uh, this ain't got nothing to do with me, so I'm checking out. You know, and I would fall asleep or act like I'm, you know, yeah, how many of you ever done that? Sitting in church and go like this, you know, and, 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 and you would glance up and mom's looking at you, giving the eye. You know, it's like, I can't fake that sleeping thing, you know, or I would just absolutely fall asleep. And, you know, somebody would nudge you and you're starting to snore. Uh, but that's the way I was when I was a teenager because I don't, I don't really remember any... Uh, any too many lessons or, or preachings that caught my attention that stuck with me and, and then uh, then I sit back and say well no you know maybe that's why I turned left and said that I you know I'm not following Jesus anymore you know I, I so so I gotta have somebody raising in the hand in the back yes wrong with being left? nothing wrong with being left you're probably, if you're left, you're probably the only one in your right mind. But, you know, but that's beside the point. So in that, I'm sitting back there and say, okay, God, I, I want to be a preacher that says this. You know, if you're calling me to preach, I want to understand that everything in this book has a relativity at one point or another in my life or in somebody's life that has something to do with us now. And that's why a lot of people check out and say, I don't read the Bible. It ain't got nothing to do with me. Well, I'm going to tell you that's a bull-faced lie because right now God has everything to do. There's so much scripture because uh, up to like the, when I started to think back, think back through how, how God was doing relativity of, of from 2020 to, 20, to, to, to now. That he was using the relativity of the Old Testament of Egypt and the pestilence and the things and the things that were happening. He was putting that as the same thing that is happening to us today. Everybody's like, no, that's nonsense. No, no, no. You be still. Go do your research. There has been notifications of water turning to blood. There's been notifications of locusts absolutely eating stuff up in the land. It might not have been worldwide, but it's definitely happening here and there in the territories. So, But God now is sitting back here, and the title of today's message is God is going to, to change some things. So he's moving from the Scriptures. He's going to move in the Old Testament. He's still going to be relative, but he's moving in the Scriptures from the from, from the time of whoo here we go here we go thank you holy spirit here we go he's moving from the time of egypt and exodus and he's moving from that time now he's moving into the time of the judges mm, this is a word this i did not see this coming <laughs> and i knew it too so it's, i just knew something was going he was going to do something he's just going to sneak up there and do it mm. you know it's like the other day my son he comes up to me he goes hey when you fight dad when you fight how do you do you go like this and call like this when I go like this i said no you want to do that you let you're letting the enemy see your punch coming and they're gonna go like this and bop you in the nose and then black and then your eyes are gonna water and then they beat the crap out of you it's the same thing god's doing to the devil sometimes god holds his stuff he holds his fight close to himself there he don't telegraph his punch it's the next thing you know it's going wham down it goes but here's what's happening next okay we're going to read through this scripture because God is fixing to do some things he's fixing to change some things from this day now on for for, for a while the season is changing it's just like now we're sitting back thinking oh, 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 oh where does spring go which we jump from winter and it's going to be 90 degrees the last couple days going to be like 90 degrees it's hot it's already jumping in the summertime here you know it's like where did spring go the seasons haven't even changed it was just a little while just a little while and things change but right now God is fixing to say I'm changing some things I'm changing some things and so here's what's happening we're moving into a time and he's using it in second Kings so if you have your Bibles turn to second Kings chapter 2 second Kings chapter 2 
We're going to try to, uh, I'm going to try to, uh, it's in the plans, it could change. Yeah, I'm, the Spirit of God's here, I can, mm, I can feel it, you know, I can feel it. So in that, uh, uh, this whole, everything here, just <laughs> probably about to change, just like he said. Uh, so the word that's here, but all I know is the scripture here, he's going to work off of. He's going to use this and speak off of. So chapter 2, we're going to try to read through the whole thing um, and, and see what God's saying to us today. Uh, but right now we're picking it up in chapter 2. Here we are. There's a guy named uh, Elijah. Okay, get it. There's two guys in this story. One is Elijah and one is Elisha. Elijah is the older one. He is the one who was the judge. He was the judge over Israel. Okay, he was the prophet. God used the prophets to speak judgment or to, be, to speak blessings over the people of Israel. To, the people of God. Get that. Get that. The people of God. And then the point of that, that they would turn, either get closer to God or that they would get punished for disobeying God. So in that, that, that this guy, he's saying, uh, um, Elijah, he was pointed to saying, look, my people are worshiping this God, Baal. He goes, this is making me mad. I'm tired of it. Let's go do something about it. So he gets Elijah. It gives him great boldness and goes up to the king. And he says, you know, hey, king, you and your prophets of Baal, come out here to the field and we're going to have a, a, a a, a, a showdown, okay? We're going to see whose God is real and whose God is not real, and we're going to show up. And I'm telling you, this is what's coming, and this is what's coming soon. It's coming soon, okay? So pay attention, all right? So it's not just here in America, it's everywhere. If you're in Africa, you're in Kenya, wherever it is, God is coming soon, and He's going to do some showing off, and He's going to show that He is God Jehovah. He is a living God, and that, that people are now, it's no more of this in-between stuff. God is going forth, and He's going to say, you're either going to be for me, or you're going to be against me. This is the moment, this is the judgment that is coming from this point forward, okay? Get that, okay? So Elijah is standing there, and he, he says, look, let's go have a showdown. He turns around and goes, all right, you're prophets of Baal. Go uh, and, and make a sacrifice. Your God calls down fire in that your God is real. We'll worship your God. But if your God doesn't, and my God springs down fire, and it burns up the offering, then my God is real, and we will all worship my God. And so it, the, the showdown begins. So they start over, and he let them go first, you know, because he's just like being a polite prophet, you know. He's like, you know, you guys go right ahead first. So he sits there, and, and they're over there. They're, they're doing their little dance, their ritual dance, you know, kind of like, you know, uh, some people in there worshiping things like that, you know, and they're worshiping things. And, and next thing you know, there's nothing happening, you know. And so, so, so Elijah's being, he's, you know, how, how many you know you them Christians that are kind of like smart mouths, you know? You know, they got this something smart to say about everything, you know. Uh, so somebody's pointing at me. But, you know, it's like this, you know. So one time, so they're doing their dances and they're getting, getting so bad, they're cutting themselves. They're figuring if I can bring torture to myself, maybe my God will come up and he'll show up. So, 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 so Elijah goes like this, hey, 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 maybe you need to go a little bit louder. He's sleeping. Yell a little bit louder. And he's taunting them. So they start yelling louder, you know. And so like the next thing you know, he gets this real one. This one cracks me up. You can go read the story. It's pretty funny, you know. So he goes there and he tells them, he goes, hey, look, look, look. Maybe you need to yell a little but, but, bit louder because maybe he's going to the bathroom. He's going number two, two. You know, it's like, you know, it's like are you crazy? What are you saying? I'm just telling you what the Bible said, okay? Sometimes we forget. We don't read the Bible. We don't know what's in there. Some of the stuff in there is funny. God has a sense of humor, you know, sometimes. You know, but he also has a, you know, a loving kindness kind, and he's also got a judgment. Right now, he's angry. So in that, he's not playing. And he's tormenting the demons and the stuff and these, these people over here as in he's making fun of them. But finally their time is up. He's saying, okay, Elijah says it's my time. So Elijah prays one little short little prayer and all of a sudden, boom, fire comes down from heaven. And, and he, before time, he'd have poured water over everything to, make it, to, to show that he's just making it a little bit harder. You know, saying, hey, my God's so great. No matter what the problem is, my God will still burn it up. So in that, he brings fire down from there. And then after the fire comes down there, Elijah goes over there by himself, uh, by himself, and kills all 144 preachers. Could you imagine that happening today in, 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 in our culture? Now, maybe in another country, it probably could happen real easy, not, not a problem, you know. So some places are just mm, different, you know. But here, you, you could get on CNN and be going like this, live, Christians go crazy and kill all the uh, 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 atheists, you know, and like... <laughs> That would be crazy. 
But don't put it past God and what he's going to do, okay? Don't put it in past God what he's going to do because the, the, the country of America has raised up a God uh, to suit themselves, to live in a way of sin and say that they're being okay. And God saying, that sin, that sin, stop it. You're, 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 you're making up excuses or you're making up ways to say that you're not sinning. You're making up a way to say, if I do it this way, God will be happy and then I'm not sinning. It'll be okay. You're lying to yourself. You're deceiving yourself. And God's saying, no. So in that, Elijah being the judge at the time, saying, okay, God comes to Elijah and says, all right, Elijah, I need you to go pick out another guy that's going to be your successor. successor. So in that, uh, I know I'm, I'm done with you. You did a great job. I want, I want you to come. You're going to come with me, and, and I want somebody else to take your spot. This is the change that's coming. Hear me out, okay? We're going to read that, and we're going to see what God's up to, okay? So in that, so, so, so this guy, he's a farmer. Elijah's just doing a walk, and he's doing like this. He's like, hey, 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 could you stop with the plows already for a minute and then talk to me? So he starts talking to me. He says, listen, God wants you to come follow me. Put the plows away. Just, you know, and, and come on. So what he did, he says, I'm going to follow God. I'm going to follow this man. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to. So he kills all his ox and, and has a big party because what's the sense of letting his ox go? And they're just going to go roam around and destroy everything. So he just has like this party and they, he kills the ox and they, they eat the ox and then he burns up all his plows. So he has nothing to go back to. So in that, the calling of, on God, he takes it serious of what, what God has called him to do. And he says, you know what? I'm going to follow God with everything I have. I'm going to sell it all. I'm going to burn it all up. And I'm going to follow God with all I have. And this is where we pick it up in, in, in uh, um, chapter 2 Kings chapter 2. They are walking together. Elijah is training Elisha. Okay? And it's been a little bit of time. And we'll start off in verse 1. Verse 1. And it came to pass when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the Lord, <clears throat> so they went down to Bethel. Now the son of the prophet who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from you from you today? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Then Elijah, Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. Now let's stop right there for a minute, okay? As I, <clears throat> excuse me, one minute, I'm going to drink. So, so as I was reading this, I'm like, all right, God, what, 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 are you, what are you trying to say to us? What does this have to do with us? As you see in this picture, the new called man of God, the guy who just got the calling of saying, I'm going to do this in your life. This is like prophesied in you. I've got this thing to do for you. But it's really interesting. Right off the bat, even the guy who's training him is trying to leave him in the dirt of saying, you know, why don't you stay over here? Stay over here. I'm going to go over here. He's trying to cut the ties of saying why. Because it's like, I, I, it's like to see, are you really meaning business about following God? But even then, when you listen to it, when they get over to this one point, there's these guys that are all like, you know, they, how do they know that Elijah is fixing to go to God? Leave. either For them, they're thinking he's going to die. Because no, they've never known anyone to just like disappear and go up into heaven and be gone up with God. So in that they're saying, so he's leaving today. And, and in it, Elisha's sitting there like, listen, you know what? I hear what you're saying. I don't want to hear it no more. So I'm like, okay, God, what does that have to do with us? So here it is, is that some people... I don't care how old you are. You could be, you could be as young as 8, 9, 10 year old. You could be a teenager. You could be in your 50s and 60s. 
At some point or another, you had God speak to you through somebody or you heard his voice. Okay? And you know there's something in you that you're supposed to do for him. But things have come into your life and have said something into your life and redirected you and kept you from doing the purpose. Elisha has automatically got his mindset and he's saying to him, listen, I, as the Lord lives, I don't care what you say. You say your, God's called you to go here for me to stay here is not happening. And many of you have went on the wrong path because you listened to a word and you went the wrong direction instead of listening to the word of God and stood fast in that. You're, you're allowing the voices in your head, listen, 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 listen. You're taking interpretations of dreams and you're fighting in your head. You're fighting in your head of the things of this dream and this dream. One dream is of God and one dream is of the devil and of evil. One is saying it's to destroy you and one saying it's to, to bless you. And you're, and you're battling in your mind and you're not, and you're, in your mind and you're saying, you know, I, 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 where is God? I'm praying for God to show me. And reality is you know what God said and you're still saying, I I don't, you're, you don't have no faith. Because here's how what happens with your faith. This bad thing happens, this bad thing happens, and this bad thing happens, and you're saying, where in the heck is God? You have forgotten that we live in a cursed world, and there is an evil has war against you and your soul, and to stop you from doing the work of God. And in that, the best way that they can fight you is in your mind. So until you get to the point of saying, I'm going to be like Elisha and say, I heard what God said. I know what God's called me to do. I don't care what preacher, what prophet, what deacon, whatever, whatever man of God says in my life. I know what God said and I'm following God. And many of us have been church hurt. You've been church hurt and you quit going to church because of what some people person that said they're godly led you down the wrong direction and you got hurt instead of listening to what God I'm telling you right now whatever I, you could just for as much as me as well as any pastor you do not set because man's heart is wicked man's heart is wicked and you need to always go back to the scriptures back to your knees and seek God about everything don't trust me and what I say Whatever I say, you must take it before the Lord and before the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, and test it to see if it matches up, if it is honorable, and if it is prophesied, then does it match up with what God's putting in your spirit? Because if it is not, then it is misleading, and you're going to get hurt, and, and you're going to blame me, and you're going to walk away from God, and then you and your relationship with God are going to be messed up, and people are not going to get saved because your bitterness and your anger towards me and towards God because of something. Something so stupid. God has allowed your life to be given to you for a purpose. And when we get to this self centeredness of purpose, we lose focus of God because. Life is about God. It's about honoring Him. He is the one who gives life. He is the one who made a way for salvation. He has made a way for redemption to have eternal life. We lose the focus of, 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 of it's, we're hurt now. We forget about the focus of eternity. And we end up destroying everything around us because of the now moment. Elisha was not going to lose focus of that. Where you go, I go. I am not, I'm going to do what God told me to do. And he said to stay with you. Kind of, right, kind of reminds me of maybe relativity of, of something for you maybe. How many of uh, you like football? You like football? I like this one. So a coach has a plan. He's done game studies of, of, of the team he's going, to, uh, he's going to go up against. 
Okay, he's watched the tapes. He sat there and take notes. He kind of knows that they're predictable because he's watched maybe three different games and always in the second quarter on the something, something down, they know that they're going to do this, 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 this. So he lays out a groundwork of plays that he wants to do and how he wants to run things. And then that, so they gets down to this one play and he says, he says, he sends the play into the quarterback. He says, run this play. The quarterback gets in the huddle. The quarterback says, this is the play. Coach said, they get all in the line, all of a sudden, something different happens. The defense changes positions, and they do a shift, and it messes with the quarterback's mind. The quarterback now is thinking, this is not going to work. This is the play the coach called is not going to work. The coach, the coach doesn't know what he's talking about, and he changes in an audible. He changes the whole play because he thinks he knows what's right. He says, hut, hut, hike, the ball is put in his hands, and next thing you know, boom, he's laying on his back, and the defense got the victory over that play because they, that he, the, the, the quarterback called the wrong play, and he got sacked. See, God has called a play in our lives, and in that, something's come in our minds, and we think that we know better, and we can, do, we can change the play, and in that, we can do things our, our way, and then it'll work out. But see, God has already seen the game tapes of what's happening because he can see into the future. And he, he calls these plays, he calls these things, and he says, you know, why, why don't you do it this way? It, it would have worked. Because he would have get up with it for the coach to get up with the quarterback later and say, look, 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 this is what happened. Did you see what happened? You lined up like this, they lined up like this. I knew they were going to change that. That's why I called that play. You would have got the yardage that I wanted if you would have ran my play. And God's saying, look, we can move forward for the kingdom of Jesus Christ if you'll just get refocused and make up your mind. Are you in or are you out? Let's read on. Verse 5. Now the sons of the prophets were, <clears throat> who were at Jericho came to Elisha and said to him, Do not... Do you not know that the Lord will take away your master from over, over you today? Now, that's kind of messed up right there now. Can you have somebody keep coming to you and keep messing with your head, saying like that, you know, I, 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 don't you know, you're, you know this is going to happen to you if you do that? You know, do you know this is going to happen to you if this happens, that you, you're going to do this? Do you know your life's going to change, you know, that if you go make this direction? But the question is to you today, right now, is saying, where's your faith? It seems like the last two years we've had a shaking and come across the earth, not just in one country. It's all over. It's in every territory. And so the question to you of what that shaking has done to your faith, do you believe how great God is? Whether you get the sickness and you die, do you have the faith you're going to heaven? Whether you get the sickness or something else uh, happens to you, do you have the faith that God will heal you? I mean, love, do I, I remember the scriptures when Jesus was just walking through the road and this soldier came up to him and said, hey, Jesus, you know, I need your help. My servant is sick and I think he's going to die. Can you come and heal him? You know, and, and Jesus is like, yes, take me to where you're at. Because you know what? Never, don't, you don't have to come because I believe what, 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 how I am that if you just say the word, because it, it, where I come from as a leader, I say this to my soldier and he goes and does it. So if you'll just say the word, I believe you'll heal my servant. And it, it, and Jesus is like, I have not seen such great faith in all the land. Do we believe, if we go back and read the scriptures of, of Jesus and Matthew, Mark, and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, do we believe that Jesus can speak a, can speak a word of healing uh, 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 or of deliverance and, and set us free or not? And I think majority of us are battling with this because we've seen so much bad in our lives. We're believing that the evil is greater than our God. Just, you don't want to say that, but your actions are saying it. You're believing all this hell and demons and, and, and badness is greater 
than our God. Because they've stolen, they've done this wrong, they're doing it over and over, and they don't even get caught. They don't have to pay the consequences. They, they, nothing like that happens to them. But listen to what, what, what Elisha says. He says, so he answers, he, he said, yes, I know, keep silent. Some of you just need to tell whoever's yakking in your ear just to be quiet. I don't mean to be rude, but sometimes you just say, hey, look, look, look. I, I love you, shut up. Man, that negative talking you got going on there, I don't want to hear it. Yes, I know it, I don't want to hear it. I mean, we're going to see what God's going to do. I trust God. I trust God. Can you say that with me? I trust God. Some of you haven't said that in a long time. Where's your faith? Do you have any faith? The Word of God says, if you could just have the faith of a grain of mustard seed, you can say to that mountain, be thou cast into the sea, and whatever you say, you shall have what you say. That's his word. That's great. So Elijah said to him, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me to the, to the Jordan now. But he said, as the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave. This is, this is going, there it goes, it's happening again. It seems like in, in your life, <clears throat> here we go, in your life, this thing keeps, it's like you're going around the same mountain several times. What, what, why is that? Have you learned what you're supposed to learn? Is that why you continually keep going around that mountain? It, the same thing keeps happening to you. Same thing keeps happening. Have you learned the, the, the problem that, that what you're reacting to is wrong and you need to change your reaction? Or maybe it's to say, are you, are you sure in your decision you're going to follow Jesus Christ? Are you sure? Elisha's saying, you know what? I'm in. I'm in no matter what. Don't, don't ask me this question again. I'm following you as the Lord lives and as you live, I'm in. God is coming now to say, it's time to get off the fence. Are you in or are you out? Make up your mind and you need to make it up now. Let's read on. So the two of the men went, <clears throat> went on, and 50 men of the sons of the prophets went to, and stood facing them at a distance while the two of them stood by the Jordan. Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water, and it was divided this way and that, so that the two of them crossed over the dry ground. And, and so it was then... So it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask, what may I do for you before I am taken away from you? And Elisha said, Please, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. Now, well, let's stop right there for one second, because I'm, I've heard many preachers preach on this one, that a double portion is on you. A double portion is on you. Let me ask you this. Do you really understand the consequences of a double portion being on you? Do you really want the double portion on you? Do you know the, 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 the outcome of what you're going to have to go through? You know why some preachers are going through such problems right now? They're going through such, because they're going through a fiery time that they're burning all, God is burning the impurities out of them and in that so that they will be used as a double portion and they will be do, God will be doing great and mighty things through them. Because you know what I hear? Because there is a change coming. Get it, right here. This is the transition right here. Some of you are going through some great things right now because there's a change coming from one mantle to another mantle. There is going to be from one hand to another hand. Some of you that are watching here, whoo, I'm getting goosebumps on my arms. Boy, this one, hear this word, this word, hear this word, hear this words. Take it to the Lord and take it to the Spirit. Test it, test it. A mantle is going to be taken from one man and handed over to another man. And it's going to happen soon. Let's read on. Verse 10. So he said... <clears throat> 
You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Then it happened. As they continued on, on and talked, they suddenly, suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it. And he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. So he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and tore them into pieces. He also took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he, when he also had struck the waters, it was divided this way and that, and Elisha crossed over. Now this is something really great, and this is what's gonna, what, what we're going to see. As the, as the change of hands happened, okay, this is a word I got this morning, and I wrote it down. As I was putting this, I was reviewing. This was, this, uh, through all the week, it just happened this morning. This is the word that I got that happened. You're going to see three major, <clears throat> three major uh, spiritual uh, preachers, prophets, whatever they are. They're, they're big leaders that a lot of TV people follow them. Within the next <clears throat> short time. I, I, right now I'm hearing six. Whether it's six weeks, six months, I don't know. I hear six. Three of them. Something's going to happen and they're going to come off of their main, whether it's their death, whether it's something happened and they're taken down. I, I don't know. But they're going to be taken out of that position and a new person's going to be put into that position and the, the anointing on them is going to be greater and their effectiveness is going to be greater. But these are men that are in high places of, 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 of preaching God's word. They're not, it's nothing that they've done nothing wrong. It's nothing that they've, they've done some, some sin or something like that. It, it, it says God's taking them out to put somebody else in. But for you, for the... For, For you that are watching, this is for you. A change is coming in your life as, a, as an opportunity. It's an opportunity. You're either in or you're out. Okay? Your choice. To pick up the mantle, that means to pick up God's word, and to use it. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to have a choice. You're going to come up to something major in your life. This is the water Jordan. He speaks. He speaks to the water. The God of Elijah, where are you? And he takes the mantle. He hits the water like it was done before. And the water parts. For you, it's your faith right now. And to say, God of Elijah, where are you? And this thing, this event that's going to happen in your life. Are you going to trust God and using this mantle, God's word, to hit it and watch the miracle happen? Watch the seas part, the cure happen, the relationship fix. Whatever it is, is great. Each of you have something different. It, 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 it's mm. because why I want you to understand that, that, that you are some of you are thinking some of you are making an excuses that you know I'm just a nobody look Elisha was a farmer he was just a farmer he just tilled the ground planted plants and he planted and he, and he grew crops and God is going to use him from this point on to do great miracles to show God's judgment 
and love and mercy and grace. And God is going to do this point, from this point on, He's going to use some people that are going to stay up. He's going to say, do you want it? Do you want to work with me to further the kingdom of your Savior, Jesus Christ? Do you have faith? Do you trust what I'm going to do in your life? If so, let's move forward. Strike the water. Strike the water. Let's read on verse 15. It says, And now when the son of the prophets who were from uh, Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed to, to the ground before him. Then they, they said to him, Look, now there are 50 strong men with your servants. Please let them go and search for your master, lest perhaps the spirit of the Lord the Spirit of the Lord has taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or into, into some valley. And he said, you shall not send anyone. Check it out how they b believe God so great that they take a man and God would translate him over to another mountain somewhere else. That's pretty interesting. But what I want you to see here is that God has set now a people to be a witness of what they just saw. So when God has called you to do something, don't be afraid of because of who's watching you. Just be obedient to do what God's do doing in your life because he's going to set forth a people that are going to witness God's power through somebody like us, we're nobodies, a farmer. We're just nothing but farmers. We're really nobodies, but God's greatness is going to be greater and he's going to get the glory through us. And there's going to be a witness to say, did you see what God just did? But the man of God, he's sitting there saying, no, don't send nobody. But, you know, listen to this. In verse 17, it says, but, what, but, but when they urged him to, they urged him till he was ashamed, he said, send them, therefore they sent 50 men and they searched for three days but did not find him. And when they came back to him, for he had stayed in Jericho, he said to them, did I not t say to you, do not go? Listen, people are going to continue to aggravate you. They're going to continue to aggravate. Here, that, this word is repeating. They're going to say and aggravate you to do something that you know, just don't do it. You're going to be wasting time. They wasted three days going to look for a man that God took and he knew it. Don't give in to the aggravation and waste the three days. Because you know what? You know what's harder to say? A lot of times you don't want to say it, but you end up saying it. I told you so. I told you so. It's like take it, tell, telling your teenagers, you know, look, I was a teenager once myself, so don't do it that way. You're going to mess up everything. Then they go off and do it, and then you come back and say, I don't mean to tell you I told you so, but I did. Let's read on and see what God's doing now. Verse 19 says, And then the men of the city said to Elisha, Please notice the, the situation of this city is, is pleasant, as my Lord sees, but the water is bad and the ground barren. And he said, bring me a, a, a new bowl and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went out, went out to the source of the water and cast the salt there and said, thus says the Lord, I have healed this water. From it there shall be no more death or barrenness. So the water, so the water remains healed. To this day, according to the words of Elisha, which he spoke. And then he went up, he went up from, the, from there to Bethel. And, he, and as he was going up the road, uh, some youth came from the city and mocked him and said to him, Go up, you bald head. Go up, you bald head. So he turned uh, around and looked at them and pronounced a curse on them. And in the name of the Lord... And two female bears came out of the woods and mauled 42 of the youth. <laughs> and then he went, 
then he went from there to Mount Carmel, and uh, from, from there he returned to Samaria. So in that we see that the power of God is upon this man, that even that he can speak life or he can speak death. That same anointing is going to cross the earth right now. And, in, and, and, and it's just like, are you really believing God to, do, to use you? The change is coming. For 1 John, 4, 1 John 4, 4 says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Do you believe? The Holy Ghost in you is the living God that lives in you is greater than the devil and the demons that roam this earth, even humans that are just mean. Sometimes it's not a demon or a devil. It's just ordinary people and just messed up people, broken people. But do you have the faith to believe that God is greater? Right now, the actions across the world and even the people that are around me, we believe God for that we're going to go to heaven and that's about it. We believe Him for nothing else. And God's fixing to show you the truth. He's going to do some things and judgment's going to come. People that think that they're going to get away with it are not going to get away with it. They're going to be judged. Just like these little youth right here, how many people they probably tormented and caused trouble to. All they did was call him a ball headed And they lost their life because he, they made fun of the prophet. Be careful who you speak against. That's a word right there. Be careful who you speak against. Two bears came out and killed 42 teenagers. Matthew 9, 37 says this, Then he said to, the, to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the labor, labors are few. This message is to let you know why God is moving this move right now, because the harvest is here. There are people searching for Jesus Christ. And you that are watching, majority of you are, that are watching, majority of you are believers. You are following Jesus Christ and you're searching and you're, you're, you're always doing something about God and about Jesus. And God is calling to you. He's calling to you to step up and trust Him to do great and mighty things. Can you speak, see yourself speaking over a dead body and watch it come back to life? Really, honestly. Because there's, there's a few of you that God's going to do that with. And it's crazy. We're just a, no, no, we're just a little small little ministry here in, in the country somewhere. But God is speaking to somebody and saying, I'm going to use you to do these kind of miracles. Some of you are going to be able to speak over people with cancer and the cancer is going to leave. Some of you are going to speak over somebody that's been in a wheelchair their whole life. They're going to get up and walk. God's... That, we, you're watching because you're like me. We're not famous. We're not, you know, no, you know, we're just, we're just normal people. And God's going to use us to show his greatness. And in that, thousands will be saved. So one day when you're standing before Jesus Christ and you're going to stand there in that one moment in time and, he, and God's going to say, and Jesus is going to look at you and say, well done, good and faithful servant. But when I set the task before you, you stepped up and say, I'm in. I'm not going to leave you until it, it, it's over. And in that, turn around and see your reward. And you're going to turn around and you're going to see all the faces that were connected in your faith walk they got saved because they saw or heard you be used. And in that, they trusted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And they're in heaven because of that action. We have lost the focus in that. It's all about me. It's all about the money. It's all about how I can turn the church into a business. It's all about how I can make a, a good living out of the church. Or I'm going to, you know what? It, it, uh, stick that in your sock and throw it in the garbage because it's not what it's about. It's about souls. Souls are dying and going to hell, and we need to start seeing souls that they're very valuable, and hell is real.
we're done. Maybe today you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. For some odd reason you ended up here and you made it this far. Today I want to invite you. You don't know when your last breath is going to happen. My cousin, Friday, Thursday morning, just he's been battling cancer. He was just going to go to the hospital because he was in pain and he didn't come out. Many, many names I can name that have passed away from two years old to 70 to 90. You, 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 you don't know when your last day is. If you die, where will you spend eternity? Heaven or hell? No in-between place. There's only two places. And if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will spend eternity in hell. Period. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. To, know, to, to do that, to end up in heaven is to do this. Is to recognize Jesus paid a price because according to, to, to God's word is... Your sin is a wage. It's a cost. It costs you something. So in that, your sin is the wages of death. It's eternity in hell separated from God. And in that, you have to pay that price. And in that, Jesus said, I will pay that price. And that way, you can go to heaven. So in that, that means you need to repent. Say, I'm sorry for my sins. Turn from the sins. Stop doing the sins. So if you're sleeping with your girlfriend or your boyfriend and having sex outside of marriage, you need to stop. That seems to be pretty big. It seems to be a really pretty big thing because, you know, it's like, well, once I did it, it's, you know, it's okay. You know, we got to test drive everything before we go do it. You know, you're lying to yourself and you're creating a God to suit yourself. And in that, so you've now broken the one commandment. You made a God a great an image. You, you've created a new God. So in that, just one sin, you could just, if you just get judged by ten, the Ten Commandments, if you just break one of them, you broke them all. So in that, all of us are doomed. We're just doomed. So in that, we need Jesus because he paid the price for it. So we, we repent of our sins, make Jesus Lord of our lives, and follow him and, 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 and the rest of our lives, and that's eternal life. We believe in him. That's salvation. So if you'll do that today, I'll see you in heaven. So as we pray, will you ask Jesus to save you today? And maybe today you've just, you, you've backslid and you've fallen away. No, no time like right now than to say, I'm sorry, I want to get back. I want to get back. I want to follow him. I, I, I messed up. We've all messed up. I've been there too, messed up. Dust don't stay down in the mess. Let's get up out of it. I'm not here to kick you while you're down because just as much as you did wrong, I've done it too. Let's get up, let's get ourselves up, let's clean ourselves up, let's repent, let's get our eyes focused back on Jesus Christ. He is our hope, he is our way. No other way. John Harker's not the way. Mm -mm. Jaden Harker's not the way. Mm -mm. Christian Harker's not the way. Mm -mm. It ain't happen that way. It is Christ. Jesus Christ is the only way. That's it. That's it. So as we pray. Will you seek him right now for what's going on in your life? Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to preach your words. I pray now that you will, woo, you will release the anointing of Elisha that you, that you gave from Elijah to Elisha, that you will now release that to all that are here and watching online right now. And even after the recording, if they made it to this video and made it this far, every video I bless them in the name of Jesus with the anointing. If they want it, if they want it, if they will ask for it, that you will bless them and then now help them with great um, <clears throat> boldness, stand in it and be a light in a dark world and that many will come to, to, to the saving grace of Jesus Christ through them and their faith in your greatness and your goodness, but also your judgment. We forget about you are a just God and you will judge sin and justice is coming. That even if you speak to us, may in that we, we guard our mouths and what you want to say because sometimes we might speak like, they, like Elisha did with these youth. He cursed them and they all died. May we be cautious of our words. But understanding that people will see. Mm -hmm. They will see, especially in the church. 
Like the day when that man, uh, Ananias, came in and lied to the Holy Spirit about selling that property and you killed him dead in the church. Father, our church in, in, in the world does not know this side of you. May you have mercy on us for that when it comes. Father, I pray for those that are seeking you for salvation. Hear their prayer. Send your angels now to comfort them and lead them to a good Bible uh, 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 preaching church that they may grow closer to you. Uh, set some good uh, Christian friends around them to, to get into a Bible study and uh, to seek you and learn more about you and your ways. For your word says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And many of us, that, that many, many believers are, are, are messed up. They're doing wrong against you because they just don't know any better. So I pray now that you will just send that, that across the world now. Get your people ready. Because I know you're going to send your son soon. And I want to be that five and that, that says the ten bridesmaids, that five were ready and five weren't. I, I, I want the people that hear this, I want them to be the five that are ready. I want to be ready when Jesus comes. I love you, Father. I love you, Jesus. Bless your people. This week, may they see your, your, your love for them like they've never seen it before. In Jesus Christ's holy name, we ask and pray. Amen.